So you created an amazing piece of art and now you want to apply it to your skin. But the problem is that you don't know how to do it. And this is where Viper as always comes to the rescue. In this video I'll be showing you how you can turn your art into skin. And I promise you that after watching this video you'll realize how easy it is. As usual I'll be using Blender as my 3D tool and will be using GIMP as my photo editing tool. But if you prefer to work with Photoshop, Krita or any other tool instead of GIMP then the method remains the same. For demonstration I'll be using this masterpiece of a painting that I drew myself. I'm proud of it and there's nothing you can say that will change my mind. The general idea behind the process is that we'll connect Blender to an external photo editing tool like Photoshop or GIMP where we'll suit our painting onto the weapons model and export it back to Blender where the image will be applied. So let's open Blender. First thing we'll do is to set our external photo editing tool in the settings. Go to edit, preferences and choose file paths. Under applications you'll find a field called image editor. Choose the exit file of your favorite tool. This step is done only once and will be remembered every time you open Blender. You don't have to do it again unless you decide to change the tool that you use. Now let's set the environment. For this demonstration I'll be using the op. Since as of now I still don't have access to CS2 I will be using the old CSGO model in this video. But the same concept applies to the CS2 models as well. I will only paint the body of the op and leave the other parts with the default texture. So I'll separate the gun into two parts. Now since I'll be only working with the body I can hide and disable the other part for rendering by clicking on the camera icon. If you don't have that icon you can add it by clicking on the funnel icon and enabling the render toggle here. Now everything is ready and we can start working on our skin. Now is also a good time to save the session. In order for us to apply an image onto the weapon we need to do a few things and all these things can be found under the texture paint tab. First we need to create a base color image which will contain the end result of the image application. In the texture slots area click on the plus sign and choose base color. You can change the name to something more meaningful if you like but you don't have to. Set the width and height to 2048 by 2048 or 4096 by 4096 if you're aiming for a higher resolution. And finally click on color and set the alpha to 0 and press ok. If the model disappears then simply go to viewport shading mode and it will come back. Before we move to the photo editing tool there are a few settings to change. Let's scroll down to the fall off section. There we'll find a checkbox called normal fall off. This value basically tells us that when we paint on a surface all the faces that are pointing away at most 80 degrees from us will be painted. This means that if a surface face is pointing 80 degrees or less away from the brush then it will be painted otherwise it won't. Let's disable this value so that when we apply our image it will kinda wrap itself around the weapon. Another two checkboxes that we need to look at are the occlude and back face culling under the options area. When these are enabled it means that only the side facing the brush will be painted. If you want the skin to have different images on each side then keep the checkboxes enabled. And if you want the skin to have the same image on both sides then you should uncheck them. For my skin I want both sides to have the same image so I will uncheck them. The final setting that we need to change is the screen grab size under the external area. These values decide the size of the image that we will work with in our photo editing tool. I suggest using values that are close to the size of your painting. The size of my painting is 3840 by 2160 so I'll use these values. One last thing we need to do before we move to the photo editing tool is to position the model so that the side faces us. And we can do so by clicking on the X in the XYZ axis above. Now when we open GIMP we will find an image of the model in this position. This is the optimal position if you want to paint the body of the weapon. But if your needs are different then position the weapon as you need. And with this done we are finally ready. Click on quick edit in order to open the photo editing tool you specified in the preferences.
As I said a moment ago, this is a picture of the model how we positioned it in Blender. And the size of the image is the same size we specified in the screen grab fields. You can already start drawing on the model if you want, but I will show you a neat way that will limit your changes to the body of the weapon. If you're using a different tool other than GIMP, then don't worry, the same concept applies to whatever tool you're using as well. Create a layer group by clicking on this icon below. This will allow us to group our layers together. You will see why in a second. Drag the weapons layer into the layer group. With the weapons layer chosen, choose the color selection tool and click anywhere on the empty area. Press Ctrl I to invert the selection and now we have the entire weapon selected. Right click on the layer group and choose add layer mask. From the list that appears in the pop-up, make sure to select the selection option and press add. You can see in the mask preview that the area of the weapon is white and everything else is black. Press Ctrl A to remove the selection and now when you draw on layers inside the group, only the area of the weapon will be affected. It's time now to import the painting. I'll drag and drop it outside the layer group for a moment. As you can see, we need to modify the size of the painting to match the weapon. I'll lower the opacity of the painting layer for a moment, choose the scale tool and click on the painting. I will position the painting so that the important parts appear on the body of the weapon. Of course, make sure that the entire weapon is covered. I think this will do. I'll get the opacity back to 100% and move the painting to the layer group. And now we can see how the weapon looks with the painting. When you're satisfied with how it looks, you can remove or disable the mask we added earlier. This way we make sure that the parts of the weapon that don't appear here will also be covered, as if the painting is wrapped around the model. We're done with GIMP. Let's export the image by clicking Ctrl E. Do not change the name or the location of the exported file. This is the name and location that Blender has associated with the model. So if you make changes, then your image will not be applied to the model. Keep everything as it is and click on export. Back in Blender, click on apply. And now the painting appears on the model as we planned in the external photo editing tool. If you change tabs, you'll see that the base color image has changed to reflect the changes we did. However, for some reason, there might be some missing pixels after applying the painting. If you get that, you can manually fix these in Blender. The base color image can now serve as the UV sheet of the weapon's body. Unlike what we see on the right, the base color image contains only the colors of the painting without the lighting and the attributes of the model's material. If you wish to texture the other parts of the weapon, feel free to do so and then bake those textures as you normally would. For me, I'll be using the patina skin type and therefore will only work with this UV. I created the TGA and VTF files for the skin and this is how it looks in the workbench. As I said, since I'm using the patina skin type, there was no need to paint or texture the rest of the weapon. Let me know in the comments if you like this skin and if you do, I'll post it in my workshop. Also, feel free to ask any questions and as always, I'll reply as soon as I can. Take care and see you next video.